and we're back to the leaky brake situation. The tools that you need for this job are fairly straightforward. You're going to need a 10 millimeter socket and a 10 millimeter wrench, 8 millimeter wrench, open end both. And that's pretty much the end of the list. You might also want to use a short, a short pipe wrench and maybe a crescent wrench, short as well, because you have limited room here for cranking, uh, you know, cranking wrenches here. You're gonna hit the spring, that one. You're gonna hit the spring with a long handle real fast. So, first off, the problem. This was the, this was the leaky part, this was the bad part. New part, old part. I'll show you how this one mounts. And this one is situated back there. That's where it's gonna go in a minute. And this is how the old part looks like. It was leaking underneath this rubber boot here. There is more rubbery stuff. I'm gonna cut this open so you can see what's inside. And uh, you see what wears in it. This is 2014 January. This was new in 2002. I think the rubber inside that seals between the moving metal components had it. This mounts. This is the wheel cylinder. It's a hydraulic cylinder. It's got two hydraulic pistons that extend from this uh, cylinder when uh, you apply brake pedal pressure and the brake fluid through these uh, lines comes here and fills this. And then the pistons on the both ends extend and they pry apart the brake shoes, pry it against the brake drum that's how you slow down all right so this mounts with two bolts the two bolts are short they need a 10 millimeter socket no extension on it the socket the the wrench has to fit there so you don't have any room there no extension on it and the bolts just go there just like so so that's how it was mounted on this backing plate. Okay, I'm gonna take this one out and that one out. Next thing is, next thing I did, there's one more thing that's mounted there, the brake line. The brake line has the brake fluid in it. You can see it's still moist, leaking some brake fluid because there's still some in the chamber inside. Next thing I did, this is the bleeder valve. I removed the bleeder valve. You put the 8mm wrench on it, or the pipe wrench, whichever you like, and just remove the bleeder valve. The reason why I removed the bleeder, because it was in the way. Because I couldn't get the 10mm wrench. Where did I put it? Oh, yeah. I couldn't get the 10mm open end wrench on the brake line below and I couldn't turn it because this little stubby thing was in the way. So if you look at it, how uh, this one works, there's a tiny little hole on it. Just wait for the camera to focus. And there is a tiny little hole on it. So brake fluid from the chamber comes and fills this. This one is up top, so air, you know, air comes up on top of liquids so this one bleeds the air through that little hole and uh, I'll show you brake bleeding and then here is this rubber cap on it save it if this one gets dirty it's a pain to do your brake bleeding so all this oval shape mounts on the backing plate there I'll show you in a sec and do look at the surface of the brake line, the contact surface at the bottom of the hole. You can see that it's the hole doesn't have a flat bottom. It's a little conical, like a volcano. It's rising up from the surface. Okay, that's how that, that's the shape of the metal on the bottom of the of this hole, and you can see there's threaded on the sides. So, consequently, 
the brake line matches it. And I'm going to just pull this one out here, like so. The brake line is rigid, but it has a little bit of give. And you can see that's how it looks like installed. That's the hole in the backing plate here that the oval shape here is going through. That's where you put the bolts through, like so. And you're going to have to turn it with your wrench. And I'm going to show you in a sec how this connection is made between the brake line and the wheel cylinder. Okay. I just need a little bit of elbow room here. Now to remove the brake line, this one down here, from or attach to this wheel cylinder, I usually use this crescent wrench and put it on like so. So you can see it's grabbing that oval part of the wheel cylinder. I'm going to show you on this one too. Just give me a sec here. There, that's how the wrench is on it, okay? So that was the old one, this is the new. Uh, and uh, I don't have too many hands to hold the camera and do everything. So just imagine the wrench is on it. And the 10 millimeter wrench. Please choose a quality 10 millimeter wrench for this one. You can loosen the brake line in this direction. You can see that it turns and when it does you can see that the whole it's not a nut, the whole threaded part turns. If you watch carefully and there's enough light. Just let me just pull it a little bit. There you can barely see. But there. Okay, it's really hard to do it with one hand, but there the whole threaded section here moves also this one starts pivoting around the brake line that's good you need that little wiggle room for assembly and you can see that it's not it it started uh, leaking brake fluid not a problem just keep an eye on things so I'm just gonna tighten it a little bit and I'm gonna put this one here where it belongs if this brake line breaks for any reason there this one it's a problem but not a huge problem because it's only this short let me see where is the end of it there the end of it is there I don't know if you can see my hand there so it's only like 10 inches long it's a rigid metal line and it's fairly easy to replace it's it's not four feet or one meter length of brake line to replace if you if you damage the thread or if you damage it beyond repair here okay so what you do is you put this one back in here and now you have to make it work with the brake shoes there for which I'm gonna need now look at the situation I have installed this new wheel cylinder with these two bolts only and because I needed two hands but this is what I did so this is how you take it apart when you have the old one here you can push these brake shoes down enough see that the end that the end of the wheel cylinder brake cylinder here gets exposed and when you remove the two bolts from the from the end you can tilt it a little bit up on one side extend it a little bit twist it the other way around extend it a little bit because the way these brake shoes are mounted here they move freely up and down see they are supposed to so that the whole thing is self centering itself inside the brake shoe okay so that's fine if you move both of them a little bit up and down okay it's, it's meant to be like so it's not supposed to move this way but it's, it's, it's okay up and down. So what happened is I just installed this one and do take a look at the situation behind the cylinder and I'm gonna have this handy dandy flashlight here somehow dangling or held 
by my hand. Just give me a sec here. Okay, we'll do it this way. Okay, there. So those are your connections. That's what you see from the back side. It, there's, there's not a lot to see. You're gonna have to feel this bolt when you tighten it. It doesn't need a whole lot of torque. So you just be careful. And when you remove the old one, that's why I took out the bleeder valve. So I can, I know you can't see it, but so you can put the crescent wrench on the brake line because my uh, because my 10 millimeter wrench was a little wobbly or an, it was an imprecise fit and I you can see the corners of the brake line there on that bowl there it's a little bit chewed up yeah that was the crescent wrench so it's fitted back in it's connected it's not dripping I have tightened it and that's how it should look like we are good to go for assembling the brake from the front that means just put the brake shoe back uh, pro, uh, put the brake, brake drum back on and good to go for bleeding the valves uh, sorry bleeding the brake through that valve I'll show you take a last look so that's how tightened bolts look like from the back side here the whole the uh, brake line is connected it's not dripping anymore and uh, now indeed both of these 10 millimeter bolts are tightened so that's the rear view